So this is the beginning of chapter 4. In chapter 3 there was a lot of new notation and new concepts that were presented and all of those were based on the notion of uppercase X which is the usual notation which is used for a random variable. When there is a second random variable sometimes it is known as uppercase Y. These random variables can be either discrete or continuous or a hybrid of the two which is known as a mixed random variable which is part discrete and part continuous. If X happens to be a discrete random variable then F of X which is known as the probability mass function describes its probability distribution. This function sums to 1 and is greater than 0 on all of the support values and the support values for that random variable are described by script A. If X happens to be a continuous random variable then F of X is known as a probability density function and it integrates to 1 and is positive on the support values. Both discrete and continuous random variables have their distributions which can be described by a cumulative distribution function and that is the probability X is less than or equal to little x and sometimes cumulative distribution functions are abbreviated by CDF. Now random variables tend to have moments and the first moment comes up quite often and it is the expected value of X which is oftentimes described by the Greek letter mu. Sometimes it's nice to write this as E of X and sometimes it's better to write it as mu but in either case that is known as the population mean and it is a measure of central tendency. The second moment about the mean is known as the population variance and sigma squared is used to describe it or V of X. Again sometimes nicer to write it this way sometimes nicer to write it this way. The positive square root of the population variance is known as the population standard deviation. Well this is a first order moment. This is a second order moment. So there is also a third moment and this is the expected value of what we have called the standardized random variable X minus mu divided by Sigma raised to the third power and that is known as the skewness of a distribution. It is a measure of symmetry of the probability distribution and the fourth moment of the standardized random variable is known as the kurtosis and it is a measure of tail behavior or the peakedness of a distribution. Now you have seen four moments here this one, this one, this one and that one. More generally you can take the expected value of any function of the random variable capital X and you are not just limited to these different possibilities here. Finally there is one expected value which comes up quite often and it is described by M of T which is the expected value of E raised to the T times the random variable capital X that has a special name. It is known as the moment generating function and then we ended chapter 3 with a number of inequalities. So that's a quick summary of some of the notation and some of the concepts that were presented in the last chapter. This chapter, which is chapter 4, is nice in that there is not a lot new that is introduced, so this will help you solidify some of your thinking um, on these chapter 3 notions, but in addition to not introducing much new, it is applying all of these to these various common discrete distributions that show up in practice. So let me go forward to the next page. Here are the topics that are considered in this chapter. 
The common discrete distributions are the Bernoulli binomial geometric, negative binomial, Poisson hypergeometric, and then some of the lesser known distribution are the discrete uniform distribution, the Benford distribution, the Zipf distribution, and then mixtures of distributions will be discussed at the very end. As an example here, the Bernoulli distribution, which we're going to cover first, covers outcomes that are in one of two states, either 0 or 1. And the Bernoulli is, is important because it actually leads to a number of the subsequent distributions. Some of these distributions have multiple names. For example, the negative binomial distribution is also known as the Pascal distribution. So there is not always one name associated with some of these distributions, and we'll find that going forward. The good news here is that a lot of the notation is going to remain the same. And some of these distributions, these are a couple distributions. I'm going to give you two examples that happen to be discrete, namely the Bernoulli and the Poisson. And then I'll give you one example, which is continuous, which is the normal. Here are some examples of where they show up. The Bernoulli distribution arises in clinical trials. For example, you have um, either surviving five years from a particular type of cancer or not surviving five years. Um, in athletics, the high jumper either clears the bar at six foot five or does not clear the bar at six foot five. In uh, polling, you either vote for the Republican or you do not vote for the Republican. In other words, anything that is a zero one is a Bernoulli. Like, like, likewise, for a Poisson random variable, that has applications in radioactive decay, arrival processes to a queue. It occurs also in quality control, etc. So it has several application areas. The normal or the bell-shaped distribution, I can draw you a quick picture of that. You might have seen this in another course, perhaps in statistics. That might arise in agricultural yields. It might show up in IQ scores, which are typically centered about 100, um, heights of children, etc. The notation remains exactly the same from before. The support will be still given by script A. The probability mass function, since we're doing discrete random variables in this chapter, will still be f of x. And it is interpreted as the probability that the random variable x takes on the value little x. The cumulative distribution function, the CDF, is still f of x. The probability x is less than or equal to x. The moment generating function is still m of t, which is the expected value of e to the tx. The population mean is still the expected value of x or mu. The population variance is v of x, which is sigma squared. Now, on a number of these, if there is any confusion about whether you're dealing with one random variable or another, these will be written with a subscript, which is a capital X. If it's ever not clear, if you're dealing with an uppercase X or an uppercase Y, etc., these will all be written with a subscript, which is capital X. Same for the moment generating function will be written as MX of T. All of those subscripts there are uppercase. The only piece of new notation we have here is known as the parameter space. Parameters will start appearing in these distributions, and those parameters are out there to make the distributions more general. And those parameters are allowed to take on certain values, and the range of those particular values are going to be given by the set omega. So that's the only new piece of notation that will show up in this chapter.